Life's complicated, and regardless of what anyone says, we don't think there's anything wrong with two grown men crying and hugging at a funeral. However, we can understand why you feel they should put their clothes on. Welcome to Deep Thoughts While Gaming, I'm Chris Chappell. In Generations, the history of America's future, 1584 to 2069, William Strauss and Neil Howe go into detail about their idea that the nature of society is cyclical, repeatedly going through four phases, the high, the awakening, the unraveling, and the crisis, with each phase having distinct characteristics in relation to how its people think and feel. And if you look at the headlines these days, I'd say we're in the crisis state now, a situation characterized by increased stress and people being prone to sacrificing more personal liberty for security. During this phase of heightened tensions, they theorize that ideas vie for dominance, eventually giving way to the next high, where through a new mutual agreement, or as political philosophers would call it, a new social contract, society is able to regain stability through new norms. The next high period then being characterized by stronger governing bodies, but also the return of a sense of ease amongst the public as societal standards become generally agreed upon again. So with an election coming up later this year and people already getting their red and blue hats out of the closet, we here at Deep Thoughts While Gaming wanted to give you something to chew on next time questions of morality give you the meat sweats and you just aren't sure how to analyze what our future shared morals should be. Whether you're fighting Nazis in line at Disney World or drinking liberal tears on a farm with your sister wife, it's important to have a standard for judging if the other person really is the psycho clown you make them out to be. The future could depend on it. And what better game for this than Polish game developers 11-bit studios This War of Mine released in November 2014. In the game, you'll be thrown into a war-torn city as a group of civilians, trying to navigate the challenges of winter, starvation, and military action as you fortify your defenses, collect food, and try to stay alive in the supply management and survival game. The game makes a point of challenging your values continuously, as surviving through the equivalent of the Siege of Stalingrad is hard for anyone even more so for a group of elderly with kids. Sometimes your neighbors will ask you to help them pick up some supplies, only for the military to show up the next day and ask you if you know anything about it. Other times you may find yourself so low on food that stealing from the elderly couple hiding in their home seems to be the only way to feed yourself. Either way, with a somber, melodic soundtrack carrying the game and the ability to check in with your survivors to see how they're feeling, you may just end up a little sad, no matter what you do, as is often the case when life truly tests your morals and convictions. Taking it from someone who lived through such a case, Viktor Frankl writes in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. In relation to his experience living in a concentration camp during World War II, the best of us did not return. The best of us referring to those who embodied the sort of universal morality that Immanuel Kant speaks of. The sort of morality that Isidore Strauss had as he and his wife gave up their seats on a lifeboat and stepped back onto the Titanic to make room for others. Or that Nelson Mandela had during his 27 years in prison fighting apartheid in South Africa. The sort of morality that people want to see alive again today. The sort of morality many of us on our couches in our homes possibly mistakenly believe we have. Hopefully for whoever is listening, we'll never have to know for sure if we're right. After all, you'd probably be a cannibal too if you found yourself among the 29 plane crash survivors stranded in the middle of the Andes mountain during the true events of the movie Society of the Snow, released at the end of December 2023. And at least on this side of the screen, we wouldn't blame you. Of the original 29 plane crash survivors, only 16 returned home. Although we don't agree with cannibalism here at Deep Thoughts While Gaming, it's hard for us to say their actions are immoral under the circumstances, as is the case in most of the gray zone we call life. The complexities of morality these real-world events force us to confront is difficult for many who subscribe to the teachings of Immanuel Kant. There's an allure to making morality a kind of legal code, where things are black and white. It's so simple. Kant was the Prussian philosopher extraordinaire and father of the categorical imperative. Any moral dilemma can be answered simply by running it through Kant's practiced three-step process. Step 
One, act only according to that maxim whereby you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law. What if everyone lied all the time? That would be bad, so you shouldn't lie. So if the Nazis come knocking on your door asking if you've got a family of Jews hiding in your basement, remember, lying is bad. Step two, act in such a way that you treat humanity, whether in your own person or in the person of any other, never merely as a means to an end, but always at the same time as an end. Imagine someone's thirsty. Now hold on there, champ. Before you go giving them water, consider what's really important. The thoughts in your head. Do you want to give him water because it would make you feel good? Are you hoping for some kind of reward or praise? For helping anyone, it's important to spend an appropriate amount of time navel gazing. And finally, step three. Act as if he were, through his maxim, always a legislating member in the universal kingdom of ends. Yeah, try playing this war of mine like that. Now some may mistakenly think this view of black and white morality comes from the Bible. After all, thou shall not steal. Seems pretty absolute. But guess what? The Bible actually says it's okay to lie and steal if it's to restore justice. From the perspective of the Torah, there are people in human society who have power and those who don't. Laws and restrictions are placed on those who have power. So if your family is starving and your neighbor is hoarding food, according to the Bible, you can take his food to feed your family and that's not considered stealing. Now you can't kill your neighbor and take all his food. You can only take what you need to make sure your family doesn't starve to death. Sorry, communists. And is it bad if you give that thirsty man some water and it makes you feel good? Well, according to the Bible, giving that thirsty man water feels good because you didn't actually give water to that dude, you gave it to Jesus. It should feel good. All this is to say the question of morality is much harder to answer than we would originally think. Kant's categorical imperative gives us generalized versions of morality that can act as easy to fix bandages to our existential problems, but once we understand more of the context of a scenario, it's rarely as simple as our political commentators would have us believe. And with Bud Light somehow still in business after the Dylan Mulvaney drama of last year, there may still be some hope that the trans feminists of California and the swamp dwellers of Florida can find common ground around a nice American beer. Thank you for watching Deep Thoughts While Gaming. And remember, when asking, what would Jesus do? Hang out with prostitutes may not be the answer you'd expect. Like Deep Thoughts While Gaming? Smash that like button and subscribe. It's a categorical imperative. Everyone must do it. And we have a new Patreon over at patreon.com slash gamersunbeaten. Or you can hit that join button to become a channel member. You'll get access to an exclusive Discord server, live streams, videos, emojis, and a perfectly just system of morality. And here's a video YouTube thinks you'll like. Just relegate your decision making, your likes and dislikes, to the algorithm. Humanity may be morally imperfect, but the machine god loves you, despite your fleshy weakness.